guys xpartan 1000 here back with another star ocean the divine force build video today we're going to be talking about midas's late game build this will be 89 plus and on i suspect his stuff will stay the same throughout and you will have all the essential stuff around this level everything else will be extra stats that you'll accrue as you're leveling up um but all the essential things to make you very strong for completing the campaign and being prepared for all the late game bosses will be covered in this video sorry for taking so long to put out the extra build videos for all the other characters i was trying to really uh push out leticia's playthrough because i hadn't done hers yet so i can unlock theo and do his first build video um and then also play put up a stream of the chaos mode difficulty which has been loads of fun and and actually challenging um in comparison to universe mode because universe mode was nice i kind of was just strolling through uh, most of the the gameplay I've, I got knocked out with a character but game over didn't happen until like the the ending of the game whereas in chaos mode it's it's crazy you can get killed by just ads if you're not careful but enough of that let's jump into Midas's uh, build video so right now we have his intelligence or his int sitting at 2409 this is without anything crafted um, and he's doing some pretty good damage, but it can be loads better, especially once you actually max out the spells that you are using for damage. And if you make sure you're using the proper spells or if you have the uh, the AI using the proper spells um, for whatever the enemy's weakness is. Um, you won't have to worry about defense or resistances with this character. It's better to just load him up with his magic damage and then give him fast cast. So that he can get those spells off as fast as possible and he'll be one-shotting mob waves for you and dealing sizable chunks to the boss especially if he catches a damage buff from somebody like nina um so let's go ahead and jump into his actual paradigm first so looking into his um his paradigm picking up from last time we're going to get everything that has intelligence on it so you can see that we've grabbed everything that's going to give us magic damage. Now, I left the ATK swords because we're not really trying to use our melee with Midas. It's not what he's meant for. He's really meant to cast those insanely big spells that cover the map and leave uh, negative status elements on the enemies. You want to give him as much in as possible from this. And then I think the next thing we need to jump into is the moves that you buy. Spicule is probably the best fire move you can grab like undisputed it is insane it covers basically the entirety of the the combat map that you will be fighting on in most cases except for some bosses and it has a chance to cause um scorch um the scorch ailment on the enemies for 10 seconds and this effect is most likely going to get upgraded or changed as you stack it up and i'll show you that later on Next, I'd say Flare Torture is another one you could consider if you don't like Spicule's um, cast time, because it is a pretty long one. Um, flare Torture is a lot faster, and then you got to figure what fast cast is going to be even faster. Flare Torture is also good because if you have point blank, you'll be able to cast this in people's face and get that extra damage off. So it might actually catch up to Spicule because it is starting at 180. Conspicuous is only sitting at 200, so it's only 20 points of int that you're missing. So Flare Torture is another very useful fire spell for enemies that are weak to it. Wisp Blaster, I skipped out on it simply because of the sheer force that's coming with Spicule and Flare Torture. If you find use in this ability, I mean, there's no harm in it. Um, it doesn't start with a factor, however. It's a possibility that it could get one once you put it at level 10 because that has happened with abilities before but um i strongly recommend flare torture or spicule other spells you could consider or should pick up so you have one of each element you definitely want to have at least one of each element just in case you can always keep the enemies on their toes hydro billow does a good bit of water damage starting at 210 no factor at the beginning, but it is possible that there could be one once you uh, raise it to 10, and we'll go ahead and um, uh, show you the stats of it as you were to raise it up to 10, what that'll look like. Deep Freeze is 
probably the better option though since it already starts with a factor and this is a chance of freezing the enemy i've seen this effect go off even with deep freeze being at level one because i left these spells at level one for the entirety of the universe campaign and this spell has proved to be very strong I could see some very disgusting crowd control that you could do if you had Albert and either um, Midas or Malkia in the party. Because if you deep freeze on top of the Demon's Gate, the enemy is going to be permanently locked into place. Because the Dark Hole is going to pull the person into the deep freeze and they're going to end up getting frozen. Um, so that's something to play with for some heavy CC definitely pick up deep freeze and uh, have your AI spam that lightning blast is one that has always been good this is a very old like star ocean spell very strong lightning blast is able to go through multiple enemies it's not a big circular AoE it's straightforward but if you can line this up pretty well say like you start off doing a pretty good blindside you can lightning blast uh, quite a few enemies for some pretty good damage and the cast time isn't like horrendously long before getting fast cast so when you get fast cast it, it's going to be even um, even faster so something to look for for the wind element and then the absolute best wind element one you can grab is Thunder Flare. And that's why they make you climb to the top of this tree to get it. Thunder Flare is one you definitely want to look to max first. Especially when you're dealing with um, big groups of enemies that are uh, getting clustered up. Uh, Thunder Flare is going to start off at 280 int. And scaling into the, the 3 and 4s. We're going to go ahead and get into that whenever I level it up to 10. This is, I highly recommend this move for crowd control and just very consistent damage. It also is his most damage dealing spell at the base level. Um, Terra Hammer is a must for Earth, um, especially for enemies who are weak to this. To, starting at 260 damage, uh, his second strongest spell in his kit, you absolutely want to grab Terra Hammer. It has a very wide AoE. Um, it's a long-winded cast time, but fast cast is essential, and we will be trying to max fast cast as soon as possible. Everything else that I left blank is not essential to his, uh, completion of the campaign to make him as the most useful he can be, and it's not necessary for the late game stuff as well. By all means, if you have extra SP, um, after leveling up whatever crafting skill he, he offers to you that you want to upgrade... You can fill this stuff in, but it isn't necessary for him to be great at dealing magic damage. So looking into the passive skills briefly before we talk about strengthening skills, you want to have point blank range, fast cast, and magic muscle. Point blank range mainly for flare torture, because if enemies get in your face, they're going to take extra damage for it. And there's moves like lightning blast as well. But this does work for Spicule too, and you know those other giant AOE ones. You just typically don't want to try to wind those up in somebody's face because they're probably just going to knock you out of it. Fast cast will mitigate that ridiculously long cast time that all of your favorite AOE spells have, knocking it down 25%. Um, That's pretty huge. Magic Muscle is going to convert a portion of the atk into the int stat that's going to be pretty good but the main two ones that you want to focus on leveling up first will be fast cast and point blank as uh point blank is more of a defensively yet offensively passive skill and fast cast is just going to make you uh do more damage than you would if you did not max this or have it at all looking at strengthening the skills so i would say focus on combat first and the reason being for or not combat first i would say focus on passive skills first the reason being for focusing on passive skills is because you are going to need fast cast to get the most damage out uh as possible from him rather it's you controlling him or the computer controlling him because you don't want to be in a boss fight in a dire situation trying to get a spell off and the boss keeps interrupting you because you're taking too long to cast the spell. So absolutely rush fast cast 
believe me, you'll you'll appreciate the gameplay so much more of Midas if you just get this out the way early. And then going for point blank range will be very good, especially for you know your your quicker spells that don't require as much AP to use, and you can get away with casting them in front. Starting at 50% damage to nearby targets. Scaling up to 100% extra damage if they're in your face. So that is, that's pretty huge. Um, not counting any sort of damage buffs you can get on top of that. You could probably literally, if you blindsight somebody, they're, they're most likely getting obliterated by flare torture. Uh, you cast that in their face, so definitely look into that. Look at that magic muscle, maxing that out. Also goes to 100% um, when you land a critical hit on an int-based attack, so definitely look forward to leveling this up as well. If you wanted to make sure you had extra buffs in there, you could go Never Keep You Down, but if you're looking for the most damage potential out of this character, the trio is Magic, Muscle, Point Blank Range, and Fast Cast. Now for actual combat skills, Flare Torture, I would not say go with this one first. And this one is honestly kind of dependent on the enemies you're encountering. So you'll have to make sure you're looking at the, the codex to see what enemies you're fighting because that's going to determine what spells you need to use on them. So if you're looking to do the most damage overall, say it's doing like a neutral amount, they're not necessarily weak to it, but it's doing good damage. Thunder Flare is the strongest spell undisputed. It is doing 280 at the base. Potentially scaling to 392 um, int damage. That's pretty insane in comparison to everything else around it. So highly recommend getting Thunder Flare first. It is an, uh, an AoE spell that completely stops the enemy from fighting back. They're, they're caught in the animation of getting zapped. I would say next go for Terra Hammer. Uh, coming in second place at 260 damage going up into 364. Terra Hammer covers a very large area and does very good um, stun damage. I believe it knocks enemies down as well whenever it hits the ground. You can see it in that bottom corner there. Okay, it's going to knock people up into the air, so highly recommend that uh, for very good CC. Then I would say Deep Freeze. Deep Freeze mainly because this is going to root somebody in place Spells with factors are very awesome, and this one has a very cool one because you can actually freeze bosses too. It's not just the ads, so highly recommend having uh, this spell being spammed. And of course, since it's starting at 210, it's uh it's going to get pretty high as well. We're getting at 294, and abilities typically starting in the 200s are doing good damage anyhow. Um, and you're going to be overloading him with int, so it's going to end up hitting. Hydro Billow is another good one. Um, this one doesn't come with a factor. It's basically the water variation of a lightning blast. So if you're finding yourself dealing with, um, you know, enemies weaker to water, and you want to decide to line them up because you blindsided them in that fashion, go ahead and Hydro Billow. It scales up to 315. Um... Ironically, higher than Deep Freeze, something to keep in mind. But Deep Freeze, I still think, is the better one just because it freezes the enemy in place, whereas Hydro Billa just deals the damage and they're ready to come back at you. Um, then I'd probably say get Flare Torture. Um, you could go Lightning Blast next, but I think Flare Torture would be worth it because of how quick the spell's cast time is, and it's going to also leave an element of Scorch. Um, Spicule is another great one for fire as well. A longer cast time, but it is a giant AoE spell. And this one is very good, especially if you're casting it while using Duma. Because you can hover in the air above the enemy so they can't attack you while you charge up your Spicule. And then just dunk um, everybody, just completely wiping them. Also leaving um, a Scorch effect on the enemy. Damage scaling up to 280. Flare Torture is going up to 270. So Spicule is going to out-damage Flare Torture. But Flare Torture has a chance to do some pretty good damage um, with point-blank range with it. So definitely something to consider. Um, it's a situational thing. If the something is in your face and you really need to cast the spell fast, 
probably go for Flare Torture, but if you can outplay the enemy with just flying away with Duma and casting while you're hovering, Spicule is a very good option for enemies weak to fire. And then lastly, Lightning Blast is another good option, going up to 312 for wind damage, and it doesn't have a factor, but it does some pretty good damage, and it's going to be stopping people in that direct line, similar to uh, Hydro Billow. The other spells, you won't necessarily need to level those up. You can if you want. At that point, it's becoming more of a flavoring thing. You want to grab as many of his large AoE spells as possible. That's what he brings to the, the team. That's what's so unique about this character. He can cover basically the entire battlefield with a spell. And if the enemy group happens to be weak to it, or even if one person's weak to it, they're probably just going to get one shot at um, especially when you think about S3 Cage, buffs from Nina, and then your passive skills and, you know, your positioning when you're casting the spells. It's going to completely annihilate, um, the enemies you're dealing with. As for active skills, I wanted to touch on this because I did skip over this in his first video and didn't really cover it at this point in this video. Intimidate is a good active skill, but it's more of a supporting active skill because it takes away the enemy's damage that's physical and magical. And if you just want Midas to focus on dropping bombs basically on the enemy, you don't want him wasting time going for an Intimidate. Um, honestly, I feel like Intimidate's a better action skill for, uh, or active skill for Raymond than um, Midas. So I'd say skip out on that one. And I believe that is the only active skill that he actually has. Yeah, I would say just skip out on that entirely and just focus on bombarding the enemies with those high damage spells. Again, if you wanted to pick up extra guts and defense, you 100% could do that. It's that's entirely up to you if you feel like you know you you need that extra defense because uh, eventually you will get hit. Um, but he is meant to be a high damage dealer from afar. So yeah, that is pretty much how Midas will function in the late game. All the essentials to his build. Everything after that is what you want to do with the character. If you want more defense, go for it. If you want to level up your 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 crafting skill. Go for that. If you want to do the Duma upgrade finisher as well, you can do that. The reason why I don't talk about leveling up or prioritizing the Duma finishers is because the Vatting Gauge takes a while to build up. And to be honest, you're going to be doing more fighting anyway without that ultimate there. The ultimate is nice, but it scales up pretty great depending on how you're placing your, your point allocation anyway and making sure that your stats are increasing in the way you want. So if you're loading, for example, Raymond up with crazy ATK, his Duma finisher is going to do damage anyway. You can always go back and level that up at the end because you want your core whenever you're doing these builds to be the best thing, to, to be your strongest um, thing with this character because that's what's going to set them up for the late game. If your core and your early game start is horrible, the middle of the game is going to be even worse, and then it's just going to be like you. And eventually, you it'll probably get better as you reach the max level because you'll probably be able to place points everywhere. But you don't want it to take that long. You want to get your characters as strong as you can possible. And with this build that I've been rolling with for Midas, we've been there's there's no trouble really with him at all. You kind of just load him up with int, grab those AOE spells, make sure you grab fast cast. And he's just, he's probably going to be taking kills from you uh, in the back line. Unless you're playing as him, then you'll be taking kills from everybody else. Because you can just chill or hover over enemies while using uh, Duma and casting. I'm going to put a clip of him casting spells while hovering over uh, enemies with Duma. I was asked that in one of the YouTube videos. Someone was unsure on how to do it. Um, I'll even talk about the buttons you'll need to use to do it and to give you an example or two with me doing it um, at the end of the game. But if you all enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment what you thought down below, subscribe if you're new. We got plenty of more Star Ocean Build videos coming out. Um, it's getting hectic right now. We got Midnight Suns coming out on uh, Friday this week. I will be doing a day one stream of that as soon as I get home and 
I will plan to push out Elena's build as well this week. And I want to do um, more of the original campaigns build videos as well. I think I'll shoot for two more on the weekend. And if not, then two more next week. Because I do want to get these out because it's been a while. But I've been trying to focus on the balance of getting Leticia's playthrough done. But that's enough rambling. I've been Xpartan1000. I hope you guys enjoyed this late game Midas build video. So for anyone who's curious on how to cast a Semiomancy or Symbology spell while floating with Duma, um, this is going to show you how to do that. So the only controls you're going to need to do this is whatever spell you want to use, whether that's a hold or a tap, you'll simply tap that. And then if you're on um, PlayStation, it is R1. If we're on Xbox, it's most likely RB. Whatever your hover move to do your boom attack when you get in, hold that in and then just pull back um, or just don't let go of it. And you won't fly at the enemy and he'll just start to hover up into the air and then he'll just cast the spell um, once the duration is, is ready for it to go out. And then if you want to safely come down from the ground and, you know, not commit to the dive, simply press X or A, whatever your jump button is. Hit X. Go fall down again. Casting. Backing up. And you can use it. And once we're done, press X again and you drop down. Simple enough. Start casting, press the R1 or the Doom Engage button and hold it in, don't let it go. Wait for your dirt this spell to expire, and once it does, when you're ready to cast another one, hit X to safely return to the ground, start casting another one, hold the Doom Engage button in again, and then you will go off and do a spell, and then you just drop down. And that is how you cast spells in the air using Midas.